Hi friends. I am here for our last school chapel service for this school year. It's just, it flew by and it's been such a strange ending to the year. And here I am not in person with you guys in church, but one last time in my office to share God's word with you. Uh, and I wanted to make it a little bit worshipful and a special opportunity. So I brought my candle along to make it a little more worshipful. Like church, I've got my big fancy Bible along to read God's word for, for you. Um, and so just kind of wanted it to be special. And then as I'm sitting here and I'm sitting by this candle, I'm feeling it's kind of warm. I don't know if you guys know, but today it was really, really hot. It was like 90 degrees here. And so I don't know if you noticed, but right over there, I've got a fan and I was going to, I'll snap the fan on really quick just to make it a little more comfortable. And then I'm going to start reading from God's word. So here we go. That wasn't very smart, was it? The fan blew the candle out. Let me just light that again real quick here. I, you probably see the problem. I'm seeing that. I'm a little slow, but I see the problem too. The fan, it, I can't, if I, maybe if I can stop the wind, I can get it till it won't light. Um, maybe just turn it off. Wind and fire don't go together very well, do they? Um, now that the fan's off and the wind's not blowing on it, I can light the candle again. And I don't, were you guys in church on Sunday? Some of you were, I'm guessing. I saw some of you. Some of you maybe watched the service online. Um, this, the, the wind and the fire thing, um, that they don't go together. It kind of reminds me of what we talked about on Sunday. Do you remember? That was actually what I wanted to talk to you about um, from the Bible today. So I'm going to read um, from the book of Acts for us today. This is Acts chapter 2. And I want you to notice something. We just said that wind and fire, they don't really go together. Like it's really hard to start a fire when there's a lot of wind, right? Like the, the lighter won't even go when there's wind. Um, and so notice what happens uh, and what God describes on Pentecost. Are you ready? I need to get ready too and find my spot here. Um, so this is the second verse of chapter two. We're told that the disciples had come together in one place and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where the disciples were staying. And they saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated and came and landed and rested on each one of them. So fire and wind go together on Pentecost. They don't normally go together, but they did here, or at least the sound of wind, right? Like the, the rushing, howling sound of wind, they could hear that. And then they had all these... Um, tongues of fire that separated and we kind of imagine them on their heads right that they rested on each one of them um why do you think god did that why do you think he made this sound and then had the the light of fire to catch their attention maybe i just answered the question by saying it that way didn't i to catch their attention right the holy spirit works so quietly sometimes and we don't always notice or see or understand what he does. He's kind of the Holy Spirit, sort of a behind the scenes kind of person of God, isn't he? Um, because he's spirit, we don't see him and we don't always notice him. We talk a lot about God the Father and we talk a lot about God the Son and not so much God the Holy Spirit. And so maybe the, the howling sound of the wind was meant to get their attention, right? A crowd was gathered because of that. The sound and the fire caught people's attention in their eye and got them to listen and hear the disciples. And then listen to what else we hear. This is the next verse, verse four. All of them, the disciples, were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so the Spirit got their attention with this loud wind sound and the tongues of fire. 
And then they spoke in tongues in different languages, what languages they'd never learned before, but that the people that were gathered there could hear from lots of different nations and tribes, people from all different countries, right? And they were able to hear the disciples because the Holy Spirit was in them. What a cool thing, right? You know, like I said, that the, a lot of times the Holy Spirit is kind of the quiet person of the triune God, the person we don't talk about as much and we don't notice as much because he's a spirit and what he does uh, isn't as noticeable. Um, I want to give you an example. The Holy Spirit has worked in the hearts of every one of us who believe in Jesus. By nature, we can't believe in Jesus as our Savior. We can't do it. We need the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to do that. And so at baptism, every one of us who are baptized, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit came to us through the power of the word in baptism. And he changed our hearts from being unbelievers and enemies of God to people who believe in Jesus as their Savior, people who are washed clean from their sins and made right with God. And when baptisms happen, we hear just simple, quiet words of being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And there's no sound inside those babies that I baptize as their hearts are changed from unbelief to belief. It just happens quietly within them. What the Holy Spirit does so often is kind of quiet and behind the scenes. And even when I'm afraid or when I have difficulties or I'm burdened, and maybe you are right now, like I am with some things too, when I remember the promises that God has or when I read the Bible like we're doing now, the Holy Spirit quietly calms us and comforts us and gives us peace. And maybe you've been feeling a need for a little of that. And it maybe has a little to do with Pentecost too in this story, don't you think? We have these people from all these different countries, different races, with different skin colors. And there's a lot going on in our world right now, right? About people from different countries and different races and different colors. And you know, the Bible says, it gives me some comfort about these things, that Jesus died for all of them. And it's really what Pentecost is about. That God gave the Holy Spirit to his people, not just the disciples back then, but today. He gives it to you and to me, not only to bring us to faith, but to share our faith to share the word of God. That's what the Bible is for. The Bible is for our faith, for us to hear and comfort us and calm us when we are feeling a little bit nervous or afraid or burdened. And it's for other people to hear too, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, no matter what they look like. And so I wanna read another passage for you from the Bible that talks to us about that too. Um, so this is what God says. This is from the book of Galatians. It's chapter 3. I'm going to start with verse 26. He says, You are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So this passage just says it doesn't matter where we come from. It doesn't matter how old we are, how young we are. It doesn't matter what if we're a boy or a girl. In the end, it doesn't matter because really we're all sinners and Jesus paid the price for all of us. Jesus loved the world and everyone in it so much that he died for our sins and whoever believes in him, whatever they look like, however old or young they are, whatever gender they are, they're all loved by God. And through faith in him, they're all forgiven in Christ Jesus. And Jesus wants us. He said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. He promised his disciples and he kept that promise. And he keeps on sending the Holy Spirit even today through us as we share the word of God with whoever 
wants to listen and whoever may believe that they can know that Jesus is their savior too because we're all the same to God sinners that he loved enough to die for and so in this same section of Galatians I'm going to turn the page one page just to go a little farther and I want to share one more thought with you from that book as he talks about all of us being the same all loved by God and saved by God through faith in Jesus he says you my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature rather serve one another in love the entire law is summed up in a single command love your neighbor as yourself if you keep on biting and devouring each other watch out or you will be destroyed by each other God calls us to love each other and that means that we should speak the truth in love to each other and so that means sometimes we show our love by not devouring each other there's a lot of sad things going on in our world and a lot of violence and we should be careful about that God says if we keep doing that if we keep biting and devouring each other we're going to destroy each other and at the same time we should love everyone enough that we listen to each other that we respect each other that we love each other enough that we hear each other that we're kind to each other and we treat each other like we want to be treated love your neighbor as yourself it might be easy for me to sit in my office here in Reedsville and talk about things like that but it's true it's what the Bible says and it's what we need we need to hear what the Bible says and there's lots of people who need to hear what the Bible says and so we can rejoice that God sent the Holy Spirit to us that we know Jesus and that he loves us no matter who we are or what we've done or where we're from or what we look like we've all had our sins forgiven through faith in Jesus and that Holy Spirit that assures us of that can calm our hearts and give us the words to speak the truth that needs to be said for ourselves and for our God and for others and so I'm going to ask that you would pray with me that God could use us and that he'll use his word that his word and his ideas and his peace might be part of every person's heart in this world and one day, because Jesus has the power to do all things, to not only watch over us and keep us safe, but keep the whole world safe, and he has the power to overcome our sins and even death, because Jesus can do all that, we know that one day he can free us from all of these trials and difficulties and injustice and unfairness in our world, and one day we're all going to be in heaven from every nation and race and gender and we're all going to be together and know the love of God and know exactly how wonderful it is that we no longer sin and we're no longer selfish let's ask God to help us love our neighbor as ourself will you pray with me dear Jesus there's a lot of hurt that happens in this world because of sin Sometimes it's our sin, and sometimes it's other people's sin. But sin causes hurt. And sometimes that hurt is caused to you, Lord, not just to us here on this earth. No matter what sin has been committed, and no matter what hurts there are, Lord, we'd ask that you would heal it, that you would help people in the world, help us who've been hurt, and help others who've been hurt, and remind us, Lord, of your forgiveness and your power and your love. Remind us that we don't have uh, the corner on the market, that he doesn't just love us, but he love, you love all the world, Lord. And you died for all the world because everyone needs your love and they have it. And we'd ask, Lord, that not only would you continue to strengthen our faith and calm our hearts and watch over us and keep us safe as we might be worried, um, but that you would then use us to speak those words that calm our hearts and give us comfort and assurance so that other people might have it too. People that we know and love and people that we might not know too. Lord, you died for everyone and in you were all the same. Sinners 
that you love and died for. And so, Lord, help us to reach out and love our neighbor as we love ourselves and tell them the same truths that comfort us so that they might be comforted too, so that as many as possible might be with you in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you give us and that you use us, that you send your spirit to us, and that we know that through you we can do all things through your strength. Amen. Um, usually we sing a hymn in our chapel services. And the hymn that we were supposed to sing today is called Spread, O Spread, the Mighty Word. And I know that when we watch together uh, and do a, a chapel like this online, the singing is kind of a little different and, and maybe it doesn't happen. And so I'd like to just read the words for you. I want you to just think about the words as I read them. They're beautiful words about what, about why God sent the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and how he can use us to spread his word and show love to our neighbor. Here's how the hymn goes. Spread, O oh spread, the mighty word. Spread the kingdom of the Lord everywhere his breath has given. Life to beings meant for heaven. Tell them how the Father's will made the world and keeps it still, how his only son he gave, all from sin and death to save. Tell of our Redeemer's love, who forever does remove, by his holy sacrifice, all the guilt that on us lies. Tell them of the Spirit given, now to guide us on to heaven, strong and holy, just and true, working both to will and do. I pray that we'll keep spreading the word and showing love to our neighbor. And now children, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. God's blessings on your summer break. I look forward to seeing you in person. and We'll pray that we can get back together here at church and school and we can continue to encourage each other and read God's word together um, as we love each other, loving our neighbor as ourselves, as we love our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Until then, God's blessings to you. I'll look forward to seeing you in church or maybe worshiping online. Blessings.